a zero hour, or as Canadian Prepper likes to put it, day X is approaching. So many people are starting to get ready for it. So many people are really kicking it into high gear, but what gear is high enough? How much effort on a daily basis do you need to put in to get ready? In this video, we're gonna talk about exactly that question. If you wanna get ready for when the shit hits the fan, this is how you need to start thinking about utilizing your time. So when the clock runs out, you'll be ready. Hey everybody, this is Braxis. In this video, I want to talk about the concept of how do we really know when time is going to be up? Especially now, given the state of so many situations in the world, I think there's a lot of people that are kind of on edge about you know, when exactly are things going to begin falling apart, and how should that really impact your plans to prepare for those things. And um, in this video, I wanted to talk about what my sense of, uh, you know, how I, I make that calculation about how much effort I should be putting in on any given day, um, you know, headed towards, uh, you know, a time in history, I guess you might say, when a lot of these types of preparedness activities are going to become, you know, less of a hobby and more necessary. And the way that I really approach this is that, for me, it really doesn't matter when things happen. And I know that is a little bit different for myself because I've been doing this for so many years. I've already covered a lot of bases, but I think for even for somebody just starting out, it really, it really doesn't matter uh, the when of things. What's really important is that each day you take full advantage of it. Every day that goes by, uh, every hour that goes by, every minute that goes by, I try to maximize what I am uh, getting out of that time, whether it is time with my family or it is time on uh, building projects. Uh, this project that I'm sitting in the middle of right now is going to be a place that I can store a lot of my tools and uh, that is going to take a lot of the tools out of my greenhouse. I've got two greenhouses on my house. One of them actually kind of looks like a greenhouse right now and the other place is just a messy dirt pile with a bunch of tools in there. We're going to have to be overwintering one of our chickens in that uh, that second greenhouse and uh, you know getting this area ready, getting the tools out is preparing you know, a lot of things all at once. And every day, every hour, every minute I'm thinking about what I can do to maximize my actions, my activities to try to uh, achieve those goals. Again, whether it is preparing uh, you know, things like this, or spending time with my boy. I do homeschooling with my boy, and that is something that I need to make sure that I um, uh, schedule into every day. Um, unless you're the kind of person that sits around and kind of wastes a lot of your time, uh, in, you know, I've seen the statistics on, you know, the amount of television watching or video watching, media watching, or playing video games that the average person engages in on a, a weekly basis, on a daily basis, and I, I honestly don't know where people find the, the time. I've, uh, <clears throat> I don't have a full-time job. I do this as a bit of kind of supplementing my income. I get most of my income from rental properties. I, I built, uh, you know, homes in the past, and at this point, I, I rent those out. So I don't even have, like, a full nine-to-five job, and yet I never have any real discretionary time where it's just like, you know, I just want to kick back and, you know, do whatever, do whatever Praxis wants to do. I never really have those kind of hours lined up, and maybe it's just the the way that I kind of think about utilizing my time to try to get things out of it. But um, you know, whatever your situation is, in terms of how advanced you are or how not advanced you are, in terms of uh, preparedness, you know, the only question you really need to ask is, you know, what is the best thing that I can do to to make it so that, you know, at the end of this hour, I'm a little bit ahead. Like, this project that I've got here, uh, this is something that I've been working on since late summer. Normally in the spring and summer, early summer, I'll jump in on projects like this, but I sprained my ankle this year, and most of the spring and summer was kind of a throwaway uh, in terms of projects like this. Uh, and it's only towards the end of the summer that I even started, po uh, you know, kind of pecking away at this. And I use that phrase specifically, pecking away. Because large projects like this, uh, you know, whether you're like me and you don't have a full nine to five job uh, and it's like, you know, you're just doing different things and, you know, you're homeschooling your boy and you're dealing with issues with rental properties and stuff like that. Uh, or if you have a nine to five job, you know, 
your your time is oftentimes you know your time your spare time for things like this it's oftentimes in little little bits and pieces i know that's the way it is in my life and so you really are pecking away at things and i think for a lot of people you know whether you have the nine to five or you just got a busy schedule and you only have a few little bits of open time uh you know in the middle of that busy schedule um i think it can be really uh well what's the way to put it um not a complicated phrase. Overwhelming is the word that I'm looking for. I think it can be overwhelming for a lot of people because, you know, building something like this, this isn't something you do in five minutes. But here and there, you can put five minutes in. Here's an example. Got some shelving right back here. We're going to walk for the rest of this thing. I'm going to get floating around so it's not just me like a talking head. Uh, got some shelving going in right over here. Uh, uh, here's a shelving on the top and here's the support system i think i am going to be putting a, in a little bit of blo a block here to kind of support this a little bit better it'd be better if i'd notch this in but i was being a little bit lazy and i think it's gonna be fine but in my fi spare five minutes here and there i can cut a 15 inch long board and i can cut some 14 and a half inch long boards i can do that in a couple of minutes and set them aside and then i get another couple minutes Got a couple of boards there, a couple there, a couple there. There's five of them that go all the way down this whole run here. Those are the kind of things that, you know, add it all up, that is a fair bit of time. But I can peck away at it. I can make that board. I can make that board. We're going to head up uh, up over here. This is another project that I'm working on over here. We're going to walk right past the chickens. You can see little projects sitting and waiting. A pile of bricks waiting to get used. There's a pile of gravel waiting to get used. I've been using this a, a lot, actually. Oh, there goes Crow 2. She's named Crow 2 because she looks just like our original chicken that was named Crow. And you're Crow 2. All right, coming up over here. This is another project that I've been pecking away at. We've got our little mini house here. Eventually, I think this is going to be kind of a, a mini house. At the moment, it's a storage shed, and we have some solar panels on the top. I was uh, pecking away at this. Digging holes, getting these supports. This thing has never had a set of steps that went up to it. I would just put a pallet up there and kind of scamper up the pallet, occasionally breaking it and tripping a little bit. But we did that for a couple of years. And I've been poking away at this. You know, if you got a spare 10 minutes, you dig a hole. We got a, a chicken fence over here. Actually, this is a better way of kind of showing it off. Here's where the chickens are. We got fencing coming along here. There's going to be a gate here. I had a spare bit of time, so I made the threshold that's going to be underneath the gate that's going to open and close here. Got these uh, posts here. There's a couple of posts that go across here. Now, they're not finished yet. The, the fencing's not on there. We just got this temporary fence for now, but we had time, or I had time, to put in those posts. I got those posts in. The chicken run's going to continue all the way around the back here, over to here, kind of by where there's this pokeweed here. It's going to come out. We get a a fence post here, and it's going to go off into the woods. You can start to see the row of uh, fence posts going up in there. Whenever I have some time, I'm digging holes. Here's some holes right here for one fence post. They're about eight feet apart. There's another one right over here. I had some time the other day, so I got these posts in over here. But I didn't jump right in and do those. Before I was able to do these posts, the way that I like to uh, get these posts set is that I hang them and then I put concrete around the bottom. And to hang them, I make these little tripods. So there was one day where I had some time. I wasn't going to be mixing concrete that day, but I built these tripods. I got three of them. One, two, three, right here. Got the three tripods put together on one day. And then I ran out of time. Didn't have any more time that day. So it was a, you know, another day or a couple of days before I had a chance to start hanging these posts. And you can see I've got one of them is actually in the ground here. I covered it up with dirt, but just under here, this is really dry dirt. We've had a, a really dry summer and this stuff is, uh, this is what I dug out of the hole. Really, really dry stuff. I uh, covered up our concrete mix right in there. We got one done here. There's another one here. And I had three tripods. Now, I ran out of time before I could do this one. It's just hanging in there. You see kind of how I do these guys. They just, they hang from the top. That makes them nice and plumb, I figure. It's like you're kind of using the, the fence post uh, itself as a plumb bob. 
So I ran out of time. I wasn't able to do the, the third one here, but it's waiting for me for the next time. I got a, got a few minutes. Now, today I had a few minutes, but uh, I was thinking I wanted these to set a little bit. I just did these yesterday. I wanted uh, these to set before I pulled the, the tripod support away from it. So today I didn't work on this kind of stuff. But the idea is that you don't have to worry about doing the whole project all at once. You can peck away at it, peck away at it. And you'd be surprised how you can take a huge project and, uh, and take little bites out of it. Here's some bites I was taking this morning. Well, this will kind of illustrate for you what's there. Here's where one uh, fence post is. And you see this rock right here? <laughs> this rock continues right up over there. It's some kind of ledge there. We've got ledge running all along here, a little mountain. Well, here's a, a little example. Well, welcome to New England. <laughs> we get this stuff all, all over the place, uh, all carved up by glaciers. And uh, I really wanted to have a fence post right here so that they could be uh, in a nice line with each other, heading right over in that direction. So I really wanted it right exactly in this spot and there was rock there. So I was drilling away at this rock and I didn't do it all in one day. I would drill for a while until the, the tool overheated and then put it down, do some other things, come back, drill a little bit more. It's got water in there because I was using water to flush out all the gravel and bits that I, were, I was taking out of there. And that's really how you, you approach any big project, uh, you know, especially emergency preparedness. You know, you just kind of, you peck away at it. You peck away at it. And, uh, and over time, you can take a really, really big project and you can turn it into something that actually gets accomplished. We're just gonna head back over to this, uh, this structure I've got here. There are a lot of steps to getting ready for emergency events. We'll just kind of swing, swing right over here to that. This is a project I'm really proud of. I, I, by the way, I'm sorry my camera works so bad. My camera's broken <laughs> and the viewfinder uh, doesn't really work anymore. So I'm kind of spitballing, spitballing these shots. But uh, this right here, this is something that I am really proud of and it didn't come together in one day. It took hundreds and hundreds of days. Now, a lot of those days were pretty full days, but a lot of them weren't. A lot of them were days where I had you know, a spare hour here, spare half hour, spare 10 minutes, and you put that time to work. And if you have three days, and in each day, you got to spare 15 minutes, that's three quarters of an hour right there. So wherever you are in your preparedness journey, whatever your goals are, you know, wh whatever you think your timeline is for, you know, when you think things are going to turn into an emergency situation, the the only thing you can do, the best that you can do, really, is just to utilize the time that you have. And, you know, for some people they may say, well, if I can't do it at 100%, there's no point in doing any of it, and that is just idiotic. You know, if you are completely unprepared, and there's an emergency event, would you rather have, uh, well, you know, you might say, well, I'd rather have a whole homestead, and I would rather have, you know, uh, full gardens and a full orchard and uh, you know a giant concrete barrier wall around you know around the whole property and everything that, that, that's my ideal and if i can't have that i you know i may as well have nothing because what's the point but given a real emergency situation would you rather have nothing or would you rather have you know a week's worth of food that you you stocked up because you put in a little bit of effort and you know what to be honest I think if anybody starts preparing for anything, it's very unlikely that all you're gonna have when you really need it is a week's worth of food. You're probably going to be surprised, you know, how much you can get accomplished in small amounts of time. I'm just gonna head down in here. We just recently cleared out a trail. Where's the dead squirrel? There was a dead squirrel right here. I don't smell it anymore. I guess it got carried away. That was a problem that uh, I thought I was gonna have to clean it up. I guess some animal came and dug it up, got rid of it for me. Uh, I think it'd be, I think you'll be surprised if you just keep utilizing the time that you have, half hour here, 15 minutes there, I think it's very, very unlikely that when there is real, a real emergency situation that you are going to find yourself with, you know, nothing but, you know, one's, one week's worth of food. You know, give yourself a couple of months with little days, half hour here, 10 minutes there, 
you know, you are gonna have an awful lot prepared. And if you're waiting for the ideal circumstance to you know, make sure that you can do everything all at once and you have your whole plan uh, in place, it's really likely that you're gonna end up doing nothing. And, and that is a real mistake. And I, you know, I see lots of people making that mistake where the perfect becomes the, the enemy of the good. You know, that's a, that's a mistake, I think, <laughs> in a lot of people's lives. And, and certainly we see that as a mistake in politics. And I'm just gonna end the video right here on another topic. Look at this pokeweed plant here. Look at those stalks, that is just crazy. Pokeweed, by the way, it is, it is an ed edible. You can't just go eating all of it. In fact, th this is particularly toxic at the moment because it's all in full bloom and everything. Um, I'm not gonna describe the exact um, process for uh, consuming pokeweed, you know, just look around, you'll find it. Uh, it involves, uh, you know, using the younger growth and uh, uh, boiling it in a change of water to get rid of some of the chemicals, et cetera. But uh, it's, really, it's such a cool looking plant. It looks like it came from another planet. You know, all these magenta stems. This one's been growing here for a while. I mean, it's, it, it's like bark on there. And this is something that kind of works along the same lines of, uh, you know, what I'm talking about in this video. When this plant started, yeah, it was just a little seedling, but it grew a little bit, grew a little bit. And with a little bit of time, you end up with this huge, impressive accomplishment whether it's a pokeweed plant or a house that you built yourself. That's it. Good luck and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.